Hi, this is Brown's beat writer Nate Ulrich here in Berea after the sixth full squad practice at training camp. I'm going to give you the highs and lows from practice today. The number one high was quarterback Johnny Manziel had one of his best outings I can remember from this year and last year as a member of the Browns. He completed several nice passes, deep and intermediate throws. Uh, of note, he connected with Shane Wynn, the Cleveland kid. Um, in a seven-on-seven seven drill for a deep touchdown. And then in an 11-on-11 11 11 drill, uh, Manziel hit uh, wide receiver Darius Jennings for about, a, uh, I'd say, about a 60-yard touchdown pass. Drew a lot of reaction from the crowd, of course. Um, but it wasn't just the big plays. Like I said, intermediate nice throws on the out routes today from Johnny Manziel connected with Rodney Smith on a nice one on tight coverage. Um, just had really good accuracy today, good command uh, when he was in there with the second team offense. Uh, another high today was the offense, especially the first team offense, uh, looking good in goal line drill. Today was the first time the Browns ran the goal line and that's a live period for them, so a lot of hitting and, uh, and, and tackling um, that we don't normally see here in camp. Things are usually a lot more toned down. But the offense scored touchdowns on four of nine attempts at the goal line, but the first team offense scored touchdowns on three of five attempts. So that, that's the more important number. And one thing that Mike Pettin, the head coach, was encouraged by was offensive coordinator John Filippo not getting too cute around the goal line, not trying to trick the defense, saying basically with his play calling, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pound it in bread and butter, pretty basic. We've got a great offensive line. We have a lot of confidence in those guys. And even though we have a lot of injuries at running back, we're going to let those linemen do the work on the goal line for us. We're going to pound it in. And that's what they did. Um, as far as the lows, um, the number one low, I'd say, is outside linebacker Barkevius Mingo was mysteriously absent from practice with an injury that Mike Pettin would not disclose. He said Mingo's going to be evaluated and he'll have more of an update tomorrow. But right now we don't know what's wrong with Mingo. He practiced yesterday. He hasn't missed any time. Of course, he was coming back from a shoulder surgery that he had in January, and he played with that injury almost all of last season. But there were no signs of anything wrong with him until today, just out of nowhere. He just was not on the practice field. Um, I was told he was in the facility at some point, um, but, again, not out here practicing. Not sure what's wrong with him. We'll have to uh, keep an eyes and ears out to find out what's going on with him. Uh, another low, was all, it's also um, injury-related, but Terrell Pryor did not practice after his hamstring tightened yesterday. And the real sour note about this is the Browns are obviously holding an inter-squad scrimmage Friday uh, at the Horseshoe at Ohio State. And Terrell Pryor, that's going to be, it was supposed to be his homecoming, his return to Ohio State for the first time since 2011 when he left amid an NCAA probe and the players selling memorabilia. But Mike Pettin today said that it's doubtful Terrell Pryor will play in that scrimmage because of the hamstring issue. So that's a bit of a downer. I know a lot of people were interested to see him back in that setting uh, with the Browns at his new position. There was a lot of intrigue there, but unfortunately the 60,000 plus fans who are expected to attend that scrimmage uh, most likely will not see Terrell Pryor playing for the Browns. Well, thanks for watching once again and keep visiting Ohio.com for updates from training camp.